welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. The Star Child Skull may just be the world's most remarkable and mysterious relic. This highly unusual human-like skull was allegedly found in a mine tunnel southwest of Chihuahua, Mexico in 1930, buried alongside a normal human skeleton. The skull's morphology, including a round head, narrow jaw, extremely shallow eye sockets, and total lack of frontal sinuses, cannot be accounted for by any known combination of deformities. So, what is it? An alien? An alien-human hybrid? A hoax? Tonight, The Conspiracy Show investigates the relic known as the Starchild Skull. We're about to meet the man who has been named the Skull's caretaker by its owners. He'll explain why he firmly believes this skull is of an extraterrestrial origin. He'll walk us through the seemingly startling results of the various DNA tests he's had performed. We'll meet the Skull's owners, an unassuming retired couple from El Paso, Texas, and a craniofacial plastic surgeon who studied the star child skull for a year. And of course, we'll hear from our skeptic, who simply won't accept an extraterrestrial origin for this skull. That'll leave it up to you and me to try and make sense of it all. And friends, we just want the truth. Are you ready to follow that truth wherever it leads? It is time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid. That's how cynical I am about the process. Is it possible technology can alter weather patterns created by the Has been engineered by the Illuminati? Lloyd Pye is the caretaker of the most remarkable artifact, the Star Child Skull. Lloyd, welcome to the Conspiracy Show. Thank you, Richard. I'm very happy to be here. Describe the features of this relic. Well, the Star Child skull is a real true bone skull, very human like, but not human. It has 25 major physical differences in it, starting with very shallow eye sockets, no sinuses, no frontal sinuses the way we have. All humans have brow ridges, it has none. It has inner ears that are twice the size of our inner ears. All humans, all primates really, have a knot back here where your neck connects to your skull. That's called an inion. The star child lacks one of those completely. In fact, there's no inion, there's a dent there. So the star child, while human-like, physically is clearly not human. Where did it come from? It came from Mexico, it was found in about 1930, and the girl that found it when she was a teenager thought that it was just a deformity, as anybody would think in 1930. She found two skeletons, and she ended up with the two skulls. And uh, she kept the two skulls in a cardboard box for her whole life, and when she was dying in the early 90s, she passed them to somebody else. They passed them to Ray and Melanie Young of El Paso, Texas, and Ray and Melanie got in touch with me, and I told them it would be about probably, because the skull was so unusual probably be about six months before we had an answer and you know here we are 12 years later. Dr. Ted Robinson is a plastic surgeon and he studied the star child skull for one year. Well I had met um, Lloyd Pye at the University of British Columbia uh, he contacted me and asked whether I would be involved in the research because of my medical uh, background. And I consulted colleagues who were experts in different aspects, ophthalmic surgeons who looked at the orbits, neurologists and neurosurgeons who looked at CT scans of the brain case. You can measure points in the skull and get an average distance and if you measure those, what we discovered was that the uh, measurements in the so-called star child skull were way off the average. It means that there was no reasonable point of reference for this particular skull in terms of the, all of the skulls that were measured. I think the small grays are the most likely combination, uh, most likely comparison matter. We believed for a long time that it was, you know, a hybrid between a human and an alien. So to take me on this journey in your efforts to determine uh, what this star child skull actually was. 
Well, I went through, a, 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 it's been a very difficult grind, 12 years obviously. Um, I thought it was going to go very smoothly once the sci mainstream scientific community saw how unusual it was. What I found out was they just ran the other way, Mo the vast majority of them. Not all of them. I got help eventually, one in 10 maybe, or one in 20 might help. The rest of them just didn't want anything to do with it because they knew that it was playing with fire. Anytime anything ha smacks of, you know, alien, uh, they they go the other they go the other way. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, I'm skeptical of the alien hypothesis. So I don't think it's a hoax. I think it's a um, congenital deformation called hydrocephalic. Skull, it's literally water on the brain. The cerebral spinal fluid that coats our uh, spinal cord in our brains, that sloshes around in there, and occasionally it's blocked because of just a, a defect in the system. There are not, as far as I know, any other star child skulls out there, but are there any other highly unusual skulls out there? Yes. Because the child's brain uh, case, the skull, is pliable, it just expands with it. And so you get these large deformed heads uh, that look kind of peculiar, like the star child skull. I think it's pretty obvious that's what it is. When you first saw the star child skull, did you at least suspect that its morphology was the result of some childhood deformity? I did not believe uh, from the outset that it, it was any type of uh, childhood deformity that I had ever seen. And then I consulted several world-class craniofacial surgeons and they said they'd never seen anything like it. And these are people that are operating on kids with craniofacial deformities every day. It was almost unanimous among that group that it wasn't a, a result of a childhood deformity. Uh -huh. What, what did they think it was? Undetermined. Undetermined. Well, okay, so <laughs> undetermined means nothing more than undetermined, that I don't know what it is. Mainstream science just didn't care. They just would claim nature can do anything. It doesn't matter. Any combination of effects, nature can produce that. So you might as well just take it home and forget about it because you're never going to make your case with physical differences. So it came down to DNA. It just so happens that that skull has DNA that's well preserved for ancient DNA and it could be recovered and it could be sequenced. So we began the process of, of uh, trying to do that. The mother was human because its mitochondrial DNA was recovered, but the father was not because in six attempts, the uh, nuclear DNA, which is the mother and the father, could not be recovered. So in 203, we had a result that we thought was you know pretty solid mother human father not but the question there was how much different is he Lloyd Pye the caretaker of uh, the so-called star child skull uh, says that the DNA testing that he had conducted showed that the mitochondrial DNA was human but the nuclear DNA was of unknown origin not unknown origin just unknown results that's different um, if there were an alien human hybrid, whatever alien life would be, it has to have some kind of self-replicating molecular system or else you can't perpetrate a species. So any signals, molecular signals would be there and they're not, they're not there. And in any case, breeding with an alien uh, is not possible. We, we can't even breed with chimpanzees. And they're 99% similar to us. What are the chances that an alien is going to evolve on another planet over the course of three and a half billion years, producing billions of species, and somehow perfectly parallel track the same lineage that gave rise to bipedal primates that's exactly like us, and then have sex with us? This is one of the most absurd hypotheses I've ever come across. There, there are so many reasons why these people are wrong. I hardly know where to start. So scientists disagree. To me it looks like a hydrocephalic skull, but uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's some other kind of deformity of which we do not know what it is. That doesn't make it extraterrestrial. I think the small grays are the most likely combination, or most likely comparison rather. I really don't think 
that it's too far away from, from humans. So it could be that we believed for a long time that it was, you know, a hybrid between a human and an alien. I'd say that hypothesis is about as solid as saying fairies did it. Can you prove the fairies did not do it? No. Can I prove that the aliens didn't genetically manipulate the skull that looks just like a hydrocephalic child skull? No, I guess not. Genetically, it's beginning to look like that's not the case, that it's a pure alien. For the longest time, our children didn't even know that, we, that this was happening. Uh, and we did that for their safety. My immediate thing was either this is some weird deformity that I've never seen or I was looking at something extraterrestrial in nature. So how does a retired, semi-retired couple from El Paso, Texas come into possession of what may be the most important relic the world has ever known? We had some friends, and one day the husband got a hold of Melanie and said, hey, I've got this strange thing in my closet or in my garage. Do you want to take a look at it? There were two skulls, and uh, one of them was completely normal. The other skull that came with it was totally misshapen. And I got a geneticist interested who worked for a big lab and he said, he's the head of the lab actually, and he said, I, I think you might have something here. I'd like to test a sample and see what I can come up with. So some of the star child came back and the NIH, the blast, it's called a blast report. The blast report would say, this is found on human uh, genome four segments, such and such, pretty precise, it was very precise. But then other parts of it, came back saying no significant similarity found in the database, meaning parts of the star child were not human. There's been DNA testing on it. The DNA came out human, not partially human, completely human. It has an XY chromosome on its DNA. It is human and that's all it is. Other mainstreamers, the more conservative mainstreamers, they said, "Well, you know, you can you can adjust a blast, you know, you can adjust the gears for a blast test, so that you can get back the result that you want. You can make it exclude things, so that you'll get a reading of no significant uh, difference if you want." And I said, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't cheat on something like this. Are you crazy? And they said, well, tell us who your geneticist is and we'll find out. Well, you know, obviously that's the whole game, to find out who he is and get him fired and that'll be the end of it. At what point did you decide to show this relic to Lloyd Pye? We had met a man named Joe Lewis, and he had told us one day, hey, you know the, the skulls? There's a man named Lloyd Pye coming to El Paso tonight to speak on his topic of human origins. He may be interested in looking at it. So we said, sure. So that night we met and went over to the hotel and my paranoid me, I had it in the box kind of covered up and we sat in the foyer and, and opened it up and he looked at it and his mouth dropped. And so strange but true, first thing we did was hand them over to Lloyd. Has there been any cost uh, for the two of you, financial or otherwise? Oh yes. We've put out money, we've tried to help Lloyd, we paid for some of the first testing. Uh, we've had to, for the longest time, our children didn't even know that, we, that this was happening. Uh, and we did that for their safety. And, you know, I've, we've lost, I've lost a very good friend over it. Why would this cause a schism between you and your friends? I used to own my own business. And by going public with this, was thought that it would interfere with the income of my business. Therefore, my employees were concerned that it would be an influence on them. You know, so there were a lot of people that uh, stand, stood to lose had they been connected with me. 
And also there's a lot of people out there, including our friends, that aren't as open-minded. And it's been 12 years of 12 many ups and downs. Years, but I wouldn't have it any other way. 100 years from now, if, if everybody knows that Melanie and Ray Young had that skull, what a greater honor can that be? And I think it means a new age of human civilization, which is the age in which we come to understand that we are not the only game in the universe. Mitochondrial DNA, it's like a circular thing. It's one of the best known aspects of human physiology is our mitochondrial DNA. All haplotypes, Neanderthal and Denosova, in all areas where there is absolutely no change at all, mitochondrial DNA is very strongly conserved. Where there's no change at all, in the star child, in one fragment there were 17 differences, in another fragment there was eight differences, in another fragment there was 15 differences. You know, it's, it's incredible. You could be in possession of the most important relic the world has ever known. How does that make you feel? You could be part of history. Blessed. Honored. We don't have a clue why, but we're honored to be able to. And we just want to do our best to make it come forward in the light that it should be. If this can be definitively, scientifically proven to be the skull of an alien, what do you do then? I don't know, you tell me. Really. We're not sure. I, we really, I'm at a loss. Well, what, what I think it means is that it begins the age of disclosure. You know, we've had the atomic age, the computer age, the space age, and I think it means a new age of human civilization, which is the age in which we come to understand that we are not the only game in the universe. Having looked at it now for 12 years, we have no reasonable explanation uh, that, that would satisfy me that says that this is a normal human being and um, I, 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 I believe that there's a, a good chance that it's something other than human. We can look to uh, the future for maybe bringing uh, help from other entities who may be out there who will be very much advanced from what we are, and we need help. I mean, let's face it, we're not doing a good job of being stewards of this planet. We're not treating each other very well. How would you explain the the popularity or the fascination with, with the Star Child Skull? Well, I, it, it's only because somebody said it was interesting, and then somebody in the media picked up on the story and then plugged it into something that's already there that people are interested in, aliens and UFOs. Otherwise, it's just another human deformity. I mean, it's not that it's not interesting. There's just weird stuff. Why not pick a thousand other really weird, funky, strange human anomalies and say, maybe those are alien hybrids? Why that particular one? Only because of this image of, of what aliens are supposed to look like. Once it comes out, trying to explain it away, trying to ridicule it away, you know, the metaphorical kill the messenger, make me look as bad as they can make me look, make our geneticists look as bad as they can make him look. All the standard tricks that they use to uh, discourage people from looking seriously at, at information that's inconvenient. So we'll go through all of that process, I'm sure. But as far as stopping it, as far as making it be other than what it is, DNA is 2 plus 2 equals 4. On casual inspection, the star child skull appears to have belonged to a child who suffered from a deformity known as hydrocephaly, or possibly a child that was cradle boarded. The former is a disorder in which fluid builds up inside the cranium and causes it to expand abnormally. The latter was a common Amerindian practice which involved binding an infant's head to a plank to gradually flatten it for aesthetic purposes. However, a team led by Dr. Ted Robinson and consisting of craniofacial surgeons and an oral surgeon, a dentist, three radiologists, two ophthalmologists, and a pediatrician have ruled out those two possibilities. The results of the latest DNA tests performed on the skull are, if correct, nothing short of astounding. According to Lloyd Pye, the mitochondrial DNA, which comes from the mother and her genetic line, clearly demonstrate the star child's mother was human but the nuclear DNA, which comes from both the mother and the father, 
reveals that a significant portion of the star child's genome is not found on Earth. Of course, the skeptics maintain that this is all some sort of mistake, because of course it can't be true. Until the geneticist who performed these tests comes forward and allows the results to be verified, we have to sit and wait for the truth to emerge. If the DNA tests are correct, the star child skull could change everything we know about who we are, where we came from. Does this relic prove advanced extraterrestrial civilizations performed genetic modifications on humans? Are we all star children? Are we even prepared to know the truth? Or is there too much at stake to allow this truth to ever come forward? I'd like to know what you think. You can contact us here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid.